<laughs> the magic of live streaming. Okay. This is uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech. We do this uh, four to five every single Wednesday. That's why we call Wednesday Energy Wednesday. Today, a special show with old friends from different places. Yes. Shalanda Baker, she's a professor of energy, I think. Energy and environmental law. Okay, they're you related for sure. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be back. Good to see you. Good to have you here. And Tim Vanderveer. How do you do, Jay? From Hawaii Public Radio. We were children <laughs> together. That's right. Way back when. And he's, he's trying to get old and look more like Willie Nelson all the time. <laughs> I think you're doing it. Yeah, you know, Willie looked old at about 65. So, <laughs> okay, an old radio man is not. You know, once you once you've been bitten by the bug of radio, you're right. never the same. Changes your life completely. Prairie Home Companion runs in your veins. That kind of thing. <laughs> Remember the movie? It was something else. And I think of that movie every day. I miss the the Garrison film. Keeler, but Prairie Home. Yeah, Robert okay. Robert Robert told you how public radio really works. Mm. <laughs> we know. No. <laughs> Do you want to sit next to each other? Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they call a gender sandwich. I, okay. <laughs> Look out. Well, you too, I guess. <laughs> and Carol and Carl, Hawaii Energy, come to tell us about your latest offering. Here. Absolutely. I know it'll be exciting. Tell us now. Oh, okay. I'd love to. So I'm here to talk a bit about some updates to our website, which uh, we all love the Hawaii Energy website, but we have two new online tools, interactive tools, that help residents learn more about their electricity usage. So uh, the first one is called our Dare to Compare tool. So I, I, I encourage everyone to go, hawaiienergy.com. You enter in your utility account information, and it's going to give you a neighborhood comparison to see where you <coughs> land um, in comparison with the people within about one-tenth of a mile from you. Um, it also gives you some insight into your billing history. So um, interactive, you can kind of sweep along and, and really check out to, to allow you to be better informed about you know what you can do um, we also have another online portal that has recently gone live for all residents again um, again you enter in your information and this one offers you insights into our rebates that are available um, it gives you a similar comparison um, to different to homes that of equal size um, characteristics and then again it, you can track your progress and how you're saving energy mm, yes but why why because it's our responsibility <laughs> here at Hawaii Energy. We're here to help you not only reduce your um, electricity bills through conservation efficiency, but ultimately get us off oil. So uh, efficiency and conservation is an incredibly powerful and important way of reducing our dependence on fossil fuels. Using invidious comparison. Comparison, you know. Think of your neighbors, <laughs> right? It's a, it's a psychology thing. There is. Behavioral, right. there is quite a bit um, behind the behavioral science of these sorts of peer group comparisons. And, you know, for many folks, it does elicit a response. In some cases, it becomes a, a little bit of a negative response. But once you start to empower people with the information, we see a lot of positive changes in how they, they're using the information to say, hey, my neighbor's using less. What, what am I doing? And they, they call us up. They ask for I information about, you know, whether it be can I upgrade my refrigerator, can I look at my water heating, and so all of that just really makes people take action. You know when KIUC in Kauai you know, talked about uh, smart grid black boxes and uh, started an initiative to you know, deploy them through the community, there were people who didn't want them in their homes. They felt that it was an invasion of their privacy for the utility to know how much energy they were using. They really didn't like that. And ultimately KIUC set up a system where people could opt out mm -hmm. of having a black box. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, so there's a resistance, at least in Kauai. Do you sense there might be a resistance by some people here to what you're doing? Um, I think, you know, I think they're always without all, all the information and all of the details. I think people tend to hesitate about where the information is going, what, you know, want to be sure that their their privacy is protected. But once they learn a little bit more about the how the program is run, all the privacy and the security, the um, and, and how it really is anonymous and, and all of these efforts, it's information for you and only you to, to use utilize, um, then I think we tend to break down a lot of those barriers of resistance. Yeah. But I think initially, when, when it's something new um, and perhaps a bit, you know, un, people are unsure of it, then of course there's going to be concern, and, and rightfully so, and that's why we're here to be able to provide that information about how, what we're doing to protect data and then also, um, you know, really just provide it to those users that um, it, it belongs to. In around 1985, 
uh, my firm, my law firm, was considering voicemail. Oh, <laughs> shocking. And there was tremendous resistance to the voicemail, mm -hmm. and the partners would not hear of it. <clears throat> so I found the junior associate in the place, and I said, we give it to the junior associate. And the junior associate got voicemail, and the partners didn't. On the second day, all the partners came into my office and they wanted it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing the power of suggestion and when you see actually someone embrace, um, you know, some of how these tools of whether it be voicemail or whether it be, you know, interactive um, online mapping of, of you versus your neighbors, like there's, there's a lot to be, you know, to, to really take advantage of. And so once, once it gets out, I think people will really enjoy it. Good. Are you prepared for the cross-examination, Caroline? Uh, absolutely. Amongst okay. this crowd? All right. Sure. <laughs> a, a law professor and a law student here. Okay. They may have some sharp questions for you. Well, okay. I, I did have a question. Um, it's not a cross examination, but I seem to recall reading something about this um, with respect to O Power. Is mm -hmm. that the company that That's, that piloted it? Yep. So this is actually kind of. In, so our home energy reports, which are the print, we um, send out printed home energy reports, similar to what I described in terms of the peer group comparison. This is one of these tools as an extension of the you know the. Um, the services offered by OPower. Right. So it's basically an e-home energy report. Mm -hmm. And on, you go online and you will see your ranking and also um, tips that are specialized to you based on, uh, based on your usage. Um, and it really does, like I said, allow you to track your progress. You can set goals and it gives you reminders, emails and things like that. But the company that we've been um, working with is OPower. So, right. yeah, interesting. Okay, Tim. Now, Tim, you're in Shalanda's class, right? I mean, I she's your professor. Actually, I'm part of the energy justice group at the school. I'm not taking a class with Professor okay, Baker well, yet. But, you know, <laughs> I will say the yes. same thing. Yeah. So, so you have your opportunity to ask what you can, what you can call cross examination or something else. I don't know that I have a so, question. I think we're it's, all watching. Tim. I think I have more of a comment though. Um, you, you mentioned the the time before on Kauai when they were doing it, and they had a black box. It sounds like this is maybe more palatable for consumers just because of the fact that black box kind of connotes disaster. Right. So I, I, think, I think this is something you can <laughs> yeah. easily buy into. So right, and, and this is a, a lighter touch in the sense that there's nothing being installed in, right. in your home or what, as a tracking device. <laughs> this is based on you know the available data. Um, and you know again, it, as the efficiency and conservation program, um, we really are always seeking ways to engage folks and, and give them the the power and the information and the, to provide value so that they can look at low, no cost ways to reduce their electricity usage and then really plan out like I need to make a decision about what appliances I'm going to buy, what, what information is there, like what, how, would, how would this affect my bill and so and you know we're always always expanding. Okay, so uh, when is it going into effect and how can I sign up? You can go right now. So this is, again, um, you can engage yourself. It's interactive. So you just go online, hawaiienergy.com, and um, you'll see on the right-hand side of the um, screen, you can say um, dare, it's a dare to compare. So see my usage, and you can ch log in there. You can say um, there's also a, a link for the home energy report. So you, you can explore, and I encourage you to do so. Our website is actually being updated uh, this week, so you'll see some significant changes um, next week in terms of the home page and we encourage people to give us feedback because we've been working really hard to make it more user-friendly and we'll continue to do so. Thank you Caroline Thank Carl. You. Thanks for yeah. coming down. Thank you guys. We're going to take nice. a short break now. We'll come back and uh, we'll have a serious discussion about Next Era <laughs> and your event. Sharonda <laughs> Baker, Tim Vanderveer. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Jim Sean and I'm host of a show called Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. Each week, live streaming at noon on Think Tech Hawaii, we interview people who have special insights into education from early education through K-12, all the way through higher education and beyond. Both public and private are areas we're interested in. We dig deeper, we try to find out uh, what it's really like to be involved in making change, advocating for it, how you reform, what people's philosophies are in reforming it. Uh, as I said, we're live streaming every Wednesday at noon on Think Tech Hawaii. And later on, you can find these interviews on YouTube and on the Hawaii Educational Policy Center website. We hope you join us as many times as possible. Aloha. 
Hi, my name is Cindy Matsuki, and I host the show High Growth with HTDC on Think Tech Hawaii. This is the show where we talk about all things tech, innovation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing because there's so many things going on in Hawaii and more people should know about them. So this is the program that you can come and find out about all the things happening in Hawaii. And this show also airs on Alelo 54 along with Think Tech Hawaii. And it broadcasts live every, every other Tuesday at 3 p.m. So don't forget, check out the show Tuesday, 3 p.m. every other week. High growth with HTDC. Thanks. Bingo! We're back <laughs> here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And, and Caroline, Carl has morphed into Sharon Moriwaki, my co-host. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Sharon. Nice to see your smiling face. Okay, we're going to talk about, first we're going to talk about the energy program. What, yes. What do, you, what do you call it at the law school? The Energy Justice Program at Justice the law school. Justice Program. Okay, Correct. I mean, that's the name of the program? That's the name of the program. Okay. Um, and so... Last we spoke, I was just sort of getting the program off the ground. Um, I arrived on the campus last fall and spent the last year really listening to folks. So speaking mm -hmm. to people within the, the energy industry, so solar, private practice, um, people who've really been on the ground trying to advance the renewable energy ball forward. And as a result of those conversations, um, I developed the concept of the Energy Justice Program. And what that is is an effort mm -hmm. to really bridge the gap between this aspirational goal um, to reach 100% renewable energy and the community's own sort of thoughts about how we might move toward uh, that goal. So, so that's in a nutshell um, what the program is. Can I inquire? No. This is <laughs> yes, counsel. <yes, laughs> that's it. We're going to rule on this, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> Voice is lost with justice. Yes. We've got everybody doing justice now, food justice. Mm -hmm. You know, when I get home, my wife does food justice on me. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got environmental justice. Right. I mean, it, it goes everywhere. Right. You could apply the word justice to anything in our time, and yeah. it will sound familiar. Oh, yeah, I heard of that. You know? Yes. Um, what's justice exactly? So, what does it mean first, and why did you pick th this word for this program? So that's a fantastic question. Um, the idea of energy justice is just now emerging in the discourse, so the scholarly and academic discourse. And I think there are a lot of questions about what it means. However, it does have some key components. And energy justice is really an umbrella term that captures the climate justice discourse. It captures the environmental justice discourse. But it also introduces a new principle that is not commonly discussed, and that's energy democracy. Mm -hmm. And energy democracy is really, uh, it stands for the principle that communities should have a say in the way their energy is produced yeah. and delivered. Yeah. I actually like the word democracy ah. better than justice. Okay, why, so <laughs> democracy and justice, are they synonymous or? <laughs> well, I mean, I think I know what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. You know, the word justice is different than the word law. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, law is what the deal is, right? It's the law. Mm -hmm. It is now, it's the law. Justice is beyond the law. Justice is, well, if the law is not right, right. you know, in some kind of ethical mm -hmm. analysis, then we fix the law and we get justice. Right. Justice and the law are not necessarily the same. Justice is a, a higher standard, I suppose, mm -hmm. a more you know, socially sensitive standard and all that. Right. I, I think justice sort of takes a normative position about what the world should be. And um, law sort of accepts the status quo. And as we know, as the climate justice and energy, or I'm sorry, environmental justice movements have shown us, law has not always operated to mm -hmm. um, assist certain communities. And with energy justice, we're really trying to rectify and remedy some of the, the prior harms that have, that have occurred in certain communities around energy development, around um, climate change vulnerability. And the idea is we can sort of advance this noble, vision of, of what a just future for renewable energy should be. And we like to say in our program that um, energy justice is 100% access to clean, affordable, uh, renewable energy. And I think um, that's, that sort of sums it up. And I don't have a position on what that looks like. But I think mm -hmm. as the only law school in the state, we should have a say and be able to facilitate um, the policy discussion around that. That's so, great. so that's what, what, what are some of the kinds of feedback you got and from what sectors so that you know you can put together what is just or what is democratizing energy? Yeah. Well, so um, the 
the conversations I had were really fascinating. I mean, last year, as you all know, was a pretty interesting time here in Hawaii mm -hmm. <laughs> around yeah. energy. Um, in the this is in the Chinese sense. <laughs> Opportunity and crisis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. May you live in interesting times. May you live in interesting times. <laughs> it's times. like a curse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so the, the conversations that I had were really focused on, okay, trying to figure out the landscape for the state and what is, what is a gap that needs to be filled in this broader energy mm -hmm. landscape. And we could have taken a position to stand behind any particular stakeholder group or constituency, um, but I really recognized what I saw was a gap. Um, I spoke with uh, public utility commissioners, I spoke with people who um, are at the Hawaii Office of Energy um, in the solar industry, and really what I wasn't hearing was this sort of grassroots level um, understanding of, of what energy should look like in the state. Everyone sort of has a view for that, and. Um, and certainly there are office holders who are in a position to advance the state's energy goals. But in terms of the percolation, the filtering up of information and perspectives from the grassroots, there really wasn't anyone sort of taking that role. The consumer advocate, Jeff Ono, has done amazing things in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. Of course, Mark Glick has done a lot of work to, to bring together a lot of our policy initiatives. But in terms of people on the ground and translating conversations into a, a workable policy framework, there really wasn't anyone doing that. Um, of course, the solar industry has been very vocal in many ways on mm -hmm. various issues. Um, they certainly have a, a valid um, perspective and, and they should be incorporated into the discourse. But the community, um, and a community of course is also a term that can be contested because mm -hmm. what is community? Um, but the community I didn't see was really engaged in that, in that debate or discourse around it. Has there been any, any group that's close to at least getting the thump of the community? So to speak, I know Blue Planet right. Foundation kind of deals with the, the children. I mean, the youth, they have the high school right. programs and like that. But anybody like, you know, close to it or even... Sharon is planning her next seminar. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. Well, you're going to be called on. You're going to be called on. Well, so um, I also spoke at length with Jeff McAlina and also um, Richard Walsgrove, who were great allies of our program. Um, and did a soft rollout of this program in January with a lot of the key stakeholders um, with whom I had spoken. And, and I received their feedback and they said, yes, this is filling a gap. I think with Blue Planet, of course, um, Hank Rogers and, uh, and the staff there are really passionate about um, advancing renewable energy. They're less concerned with what that pathway looks like. Um, of course, they've been on the front lines. Um, they are the reason in many ways, in, in, in large part that we have this 100% renewable energy uh, portfolio standard. But in terms of um, actually figuring out what the justice framework should look like, it's not their kuleana, and um, I think, again, as the only law school in the state, we should be able to assist with that uh, discourse. Mm -hmm. so wow, this is, this is interesting. I just want to throw one nugget at you, and Please then I want to move to Tim. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon and I have followed this uh, for the last no, a couple, three, two years at least, yeah. more than that, okay. maybe, three. And, and one of the things we've noticed is that <clears throat> there are various people in various advocacy positions, mm -hmm. uh, various people in various um, silos, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and as, uh, many of them, if not most of them, are self-interested for mm -hmm. money. Uh, <clears throat> and it's very hard to get leadership that rises on top of that. We're still waiting for a good dough, right? <laughs> But one thing is clear, that the people out there, they care about clean energy, but right. they care about cheap energy that much more. Mm -hmm. And they know that clean energy is you know, better than fossil fuel, but they don't know much about how it works, or how right. the grid works, right. or what the newest technologies are. They do not read the kind of stuff you read. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they don't know the law either. So you know, if you go out and you listen to them, you are going to get a, a great number of uh, feedback comments that are based in ignorance. So what do you do with that? <laughs> so this is a perfect segue into um, our North Shore series. So just to take one step back, um, our program has three components. Um, one is this policy component where we are aiming to deliver workable policy papers to relevant stakeholders that can inform their decision making. So that's, that's big. Um, the second component is what we're calling the Energy Justice Workshop, um, which you could equate to a clinical program. And that is where our students will be in communities 
trying to educate communities, mm. but then translating what they're hearing into this policy framework. Um, because of course, the, the learning curve, and Tim can talk a little bit about this, the learning curve to become conversant with energy is very steep and many fall off. And the third component of our program is a fellowship program. And that is where we send our well-educated and prepared students, recent graduates, out into the world um, and they will work closely with our program to implement mm -hmm. our policy and um, mm -hmm. workshop goals. So, so that's an entire picture of the program. And then um, maybe, I don't know, Tim? Yeah, well, why don't yeah. we talk to him? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Who's this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Tim, what are, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm here as part of the working group, the Energy Justice Working Group. I have an interest in learning more about what's going on. Um, I had heard from different corners of the law school that there was a new professor, relatively new professor at the school, that she was the energy guru or energy whiz. And fabulous. And fabulous. <laughs> and uh, was introduced to her, actually, by a mutual friend who um, approached us with bringing a workshop to the North Shore to do just what Professor Baker explained. I guess could say workshop. Pardon? Oh. <laughs> what, what, what? what is it? Did you speak French? Talk, talk story. I think, I think it translates to talk story. I think it is. I think it's a talk story. Okay. It's a listening session, but it's also doing the things that, that Professor Baker said, which is um, putting in layman's terms some of the policy initiatives, um, some of the merger language, what the different interveners are talking about, what the go-between is, and how it affects people on the ground. And so when he approached us, I, I had the... Um, honor of meeting Professor Baker and, um, and the opportunity to learn more. Um, but back to what you said about energy, I actually had a professor last semester uh, who had a pretty big impact on me, uh, Professor Ken Lawson, mm -hmm. who said, I can teach you the law. He was, he was at this table for quite some time. <laughs> yes. He was one of our hosts. Said, I can teach he was you. into justice, too. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I can teach you the law, but I can't teach you justice. Justice mm -hmm. comes from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. right? right. And so ha being someone who's worked on social justice issues, uh, primarily in sustainable land use over the better part of the last decade, I was interested in energy and um, finding out more, uh, but also representing the law school in a way that I think is consistent with the tradition that they have, have uh, had, a long tradition of folks that graduate from the school who go out and do good work. And so I, I want to make them proud as well. Now, you've been involved in, I want to say, community issues yes. over, as long as I've known you. In fact, I think we did a show together. <laughs> yeah. uh, Raise a little money, the right? Radio, yeah. Uh, back, you know, in the day with uh, the whole Kui Lima issue back, which is, is that resolved? I don't know if that's not resolved, is it? For the most part, it, it is. is. Okay. It is. Is it resolved um, to your satisfaction? That's Never a great, that's a great question. I think that's a, a different now. show. <laughs> um, largely it is. Um, we were able, um, through the help of the state and the North Shore Community Land Trust, the Trust for Public Lands, able to set aside about 600 acres mm -hmm. on the North Shore, of course with the help of the owner of the hotel and the property as well. But So there's more to that, but okay. we'll save I mean, that for a okay. show. I'm happy we we have that. largely had been very successful. You certainly had a, a public voice on it, for sure. And now, more recently, you, you've been involved in uh, issues in Kaka'ako. I would like to talk to you offline about yeah. that. Uh, so, yeah. But I mean, it's also yeah, it's community it's all issues. Community. Right. You're no stranger to community issues. Not at all. And public policy is your middle name. Well, maybe <laughs> one of your middle names. <laughs> the other middle name was Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> musical middle name. <laughs> so what does it mean for you to be involved in the workshop uh, you know, it, uh, about uh, energy justice? Well, it's, it's different for me. This is a totally different experience because so far I've been more on the side of an organizer, right? So there's been a very specific agenda going into meetings with the public um, where we know what the public sentiment is and so we're trying to mobilize folks to take action and educate along the way and make sure that there's a, a particular outcome that benefits the community, okay? And so in that sense, social justice means organizing. With the Energy Justice Working Group, we have to take a more objective approach. Um, we have to listen more, I think, to find out exactly what the community needs help in understanding and also try to figure out what it is we need to focus our own energies on, so to speak. Um, <laughs> but that's been a challenge for me, not to take an approach where I have an opinion and I'm, I'm I've got an agenda and I'm actually trying to organize folks. So You just want to get community feedback. Absolutely. So this can be a community democratic process. And learn in the meantime. Yeah. And, and learn, learn, and learn more in the meantime. So have There's you already started learn. the process already or are you just are you starting or where are you in the process? So the um, the series that we're, we can 
you're continually referenced <laughs> <laughs> without really giving much content to, um, is a three-part series on the North Shore. And this is really, um, this, this series grew out of um, my understanding that the community didn't feel like they were a, a part of a dialogue. Mm regarding the merger. Um, we know that um, Hiko and Nextera have done their own talk story sessions where they're delivering information um, around the state. We also know that the PUC is now holding its own sessions where they are listening, um, but there isn't a dialogue. And so, again, we were invited to the North Shore to engage them in a conversation around energy. And rather than start huge and try to do a statewide effort, we really want to get our process right. And so starting on September 19th, we'll be at Haleiwa um, from 6.30 to 8, doing a community-wide meeting there. Mm -hmm. Most of the folks in, in the room probably will have some working understanding of the energy situation on the North Shore. Um, but, but the next weekend, we'll be in Kahuku and Sunset at the elementary school and high school. Um, and I think there's a flyer that should be posted. Um, hoping to bring out people who don't always engage in the energy conversation. And so I have a team of students that I've been working with, the Energy Justice Working Group. We've been working together for six months hmm. to put together a comprehensive program that gives the introductory nuts and bolts of energy, mm -hmm. energy in our state, energy on the North Shore, and then we'll break up into small groups and talk to communities, listen to them, record the information both in a qualitative and quantitative manner, and then consolidate that information into a report that can then be delivered to stakeholders and it can be posted on our website. And so this is again beyond the merger, but the merger provides an opening to talk about energy. So the merger is the primary issue to start though. That'll start our, our discussion. And you, you guys are agnostic about that. We are. We are. What have you heard so far? I mean, what, you know, what, what is the issue uh, in the merger? I mean, we know there's a lot of um, stakeholders, I guess right. is a fair term to use, uh, who oppose the merger. In fact, every one of the 28 interveners, <laughs> I think every one of them opposes right. the merger. And now we have one, one fall off of it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so we, you know, we have we, it's in contention, mm -hmm. and the, and the uh, governor has spoken. Did did that end the need for your uh, your workshop? Well, it certainly changed the landscape. You know, when you have the top lawmaker in the state um, coming out very strongly against um, something that we thought would impact our state greatly, I think it makes it makes a big difference. Um, but you don't think it was the end of the game? It's not the end of our conversation. Because for our conversation, we are still trying to introduce energy justice in the state. So it could be, could be, it's a logical possibility you go out to the North Shore and then you, you find that, the logical possibility only, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you find that everybody loves this deal, mm -hmm. they want this deal, mm -hmm. and you know, and would be interested as men on behalf of the <laughs> Energy Policy Forum, mm -hmm. it says, we love this deal, or the people we talk to <laughs> love this deal, right. and we think this deal should be done. Uh, post haste, approval. Um, what happens with the governor? Does he go for a trip to faraway places? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't speak. Um, I would love to, to meet and talk to David Ige about this. Um, you know, the fun thing about this is we have no idea what we'll find. We don't know what the community will say. We know that the North Shore feels that it has been disproportionately impacted by renewable energy development. So we know that there will be some people in the room who disagree with the path to the renewable energy future. We know that. Um, we don't know anything about the merger. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether people will come out for or against or just simply don't know enough. Yeah. Um, what we also hope to introduce in our conversation are other options that have been on the table. Again, we don't have a lot of time to hold a whole seminar mm -hmm. on renewable energy, but certainly we know that um, cooperatives have been put on the table. There, there's a cooperative in our state that people often reference. Um, we know that municipal power has been put on the table, um, and many were scrambling to try to figure out what, the, what, mm -hmm. what that pathway would look like. Um, I think specifically for this community, they might be interested in how they can participate mm -hmm. in the renewable energy future. Um, so whether that's by um, community solar, which is, is also something that is very promising, mm -hmm. but you know, that we don't know where that'll, how that'll end up, whether it's by participating in other ways in the renewable energy development in the community, we don't know. So we really are there to put our ears to the ground and create a long-term dialogue. And we're hopeful that people from Waimanalo, from Waianae, from the Big Island, from Kauai, invite us out to say, how do we, how do we engage in a community-led process for energy? Are you gonna write it up? I mean, what I mean is that you're gonna get these people to write to you and then you write it up, or are you just gonna listen and write up what they say? 
Is, do they vote? Do they take a survey? Do they give you copy? So we have been really thinking through the best approaches for this, and we've been working with community partners to think through um, how they've done similar meetings. Um, HACBED, um, the H Hawaiian Association for Community-Based Economic Development, has been a great thought leader and partner in helping us think through how we start these conversations. Um, and the approach that we um, decided on was to be the listeners. We do want to collect some qual quantitative data as well. We, we um, will be giving a survey that gives a short series of questions on energy and what's important to communities, and we'll you know, compile that data. But really, it's qualitative, and it's, it's listening. We'll record it, but we'll also have physical recorders there taking down what folks say on an anonymous basis. We're going to take a break. Okay. And when we come back, I want to, I want to ask you guys what the difference is between the workshop and the PUC uh, visits mm. all around the islands. Okay. If you could distinguish that for me. Right. Which one plays what role? Excellent. Okay. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Shalanda Good Baker Good. and Tim Vanderveer uh, of the uh, Hawaii Energy Justice Workshop. Is that it? An energy justice Sick. program. Program, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And here we are in Hawaii, the state of energy, and Sharon Moriwaki, uh, and I are, uh, we're learning a lot today. We are. Because this is directly in good. line with all the things that are happening on, in our world of energy. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I host Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. And I do this because I care about science literacy in Hawaii. I want to spread the understanding that science is a vital and interesting part of everyone's life. I want to make sure the broadest possible spectrum of people understand the beauty and the value of science and realize that science plays out each and every day of their lives. I want you to understand that science is fun. So we bring on to this show each week guests or scientists from astronomers to zoologists and we talk about what they do and how they do it. But most importantly we talk about why you should care about their work, why you should see that their work has value and impact on your life. So I hope you'll join us Fridays 1 p.m here on Think Tech Hawaii. You can watch us via live stream. You can watch us uh, recorded on Olelo. And you can see us uh, each week. We hope you'll join us. Cool. Oh, energy justice program. There it is. I love it. The whole it. thing JP. takes on a new reality. Wow. <laughs> it's not real until you have a logo. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we are very impressed. Yes, you oh, thank you. <laughs> That's right. So I, I want to mention, as I mention often to Sharon, I mention uh, Jeremy Firestone. Jeremy mm -hmm. Firestone is a professor in science at the University of Delaware. And in the energy industry, if you will, the energy process in the East Coast, he's an important guy. Why? because he takes surveys of the community mm -hmm. to see how they really feel. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not the stakeholders, and it's not the guys who advocate for programs. It's not the guys in the silos who have a buck to make or not. Um, it's the ordinary work and stiff people mm -hmm. on the street. Right. And he goes and takes these surveys in the community that would be affected by the renewal project. And then he you know, interprets that data, and he makes a report to the world mm -hmm to tell you what they really feel. And I think it's very interesting because my view, and I'm not agnostic on everything, <laughs> as you know, <laughs> my view is that the, you know, people with agendas have ruled the field in mm -hmm. the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody has an agenda and when they come up and they try to deal with these issues, it's from the point of view of, of, of their, their silo. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think we do have to get out, and we do have to talk directly to the people. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we have to find out what they're thinking, <clears throat> and we have, to, we have to deliver that message, a sort of a countervailing message to the, what do you want to call it, the media noise, mm -hmm. which we've had plenty of media noise. And so you guys play a role, and as a law school could play, right. to find out what, what the people, just the ordinary people, feel about this right. uh, without, without being turned and twisted by other considerations <laughs> and vectors. <laughs> Non-justice oriented. Mm -hmm. Yes, right, 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 right. So, I, so in, in a word, justice means democracy, means mm -hmm. the ordinary guy mm -hmm. uh, and woman. It's access. It's access it's to access information. To, by everybody. Well, access to information, but it's also access to a system. You know, in fact, this is a kind of part of the new democracy. Mm -hmm. It generates uh, maybe out of law schools in some way. Uh, generates out of uh, you know community organizations of one kind or another. 
the based on the common good. I mean, not mm. on you know necessarily an economic uh, issue. Um, and it you know it's uh, it's it's another track of government mm -hmm. in our time since maybe the year two thousand. Social uh, social media has really a lot has changed our lives. The way our government works, it's it's in a way it's 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 taken it's eaten the lunch of of the legislature in a way. Um, because it has a life of its own. And you guys are involved in it, and they're good for you. Thank you were going to say something. You ask about how our discussion might be different from what the PUC is doing. I thought we'd get around to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, I, I, Thanks for bringing us back. <laughs> um, work with Jay before. Different life. Um, without knowing a whole lot about what the PUC is doing or has done, I, I take it that the crux of what they're getting at is, is thumbs up or thumbs down on this merger. They're trying to take the pulse of the community and find out what folks think about the merger in particular. I think but, what we're... But you don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. Because there are all these other issues that have well, been thrown, thrown in there and, and they don't know and what they're going to do. Hopefully what we'll be able to do on the North Shore is capture some of the other things that are floating out there. As Professor Baker said, the North Shore is a very dynamic community when it comes to energy. Solar farms, uh, wind has been pretty contentious in some of the communities on the North Shore. And I think at our best, one of the things we'll be able to do is talk to folks in that context and not only ask the right questions, but also facilitate a conversation where we're talking about alternatives, not just alternatives in renewable energy, but also alternatives to ownership. And that's something that's not really being discussed right now. What we're talking about right now is what you ask. So yes or no on the merger. That's important, you know, and I, I, I do expect just from experience in that particular community, in that particular MOKU on the North Shore, I do expect most of it is going to be a healthy dose of skepticism toward the merger. But I also think it's important to sort of get that in, in the context and also offer up at least a little bit as to what we know some of the alternatives might be. Where does that fit legally? That's, that's a, a great hard question. That's, and that's the important part. It's hard to connect A and, and Z. There is, there is. So, um, you know, you're asking the policy question, which, which is how does our work fit into that broader policy landscape? Um, how do we get our work to the decision makers um, that are, you know, actually on the ground? I think what Tim said is absolutely right. You know, we're, we're opening it up to a broader discussion. Um, we hope to apply our legal minds um, to provide a filter so that everything that comes into this big funnel then gets filtered through a, a law and policy filter um, where we glean from the discussions key principles and guidelines that can maybe inform the PUC's decision making. Now, since you've kind of, you've kind of primed me a little bit, the, um, <laughs> the goal is, and, and this is consistent with what other states have been doing. The goal is to really be able to have the ear of the PUC in an independent um, policy capacity. And states like New York have actually implemented, <clears throat> excuse me, their own community-based um, energy policy group where it's not just the, the stakeholders who are consistently involved in the conversation who have a dollar in the game. It's the people. Um, it's the people. Yeah. And it's activists. It's community members who have educated themselves about the key issues around energy. And what they're doing is presenting their own perspective on, okay, we know that you want to advance this renewable energy future in New York. Here are some principles that could guide um, what that would look like. They, you, are not interveners. We're not interveners. How can you legitimately be heard by the PUC? Great question. <laughs> so um, the PUC is starting its conversations um, on the neighboring islands. Um, in November, they will be here. And we're hoping that by then, we will have compiled and consolidated our, our data to be able to present as a, public, a member of the public mm -hmm. in that initial forum. Um, and of course, we'll be publishing our information on our website. We'll be going back to the North Shore to be accountable to that community and say, this is what we heard from you. This is how it looks in a policy framework. Um, and I think, again, this is the beginning of a conversation, um, not only on the North Shore, but in... It sounds like you're a state representative. Do I? You know, getting information from your constituents, mm -hmm. uh, trying to do something with it, and reporting back to them. Doesn't it sound like that? You're, you're the agent of the people. A little bit. I mean, part. We, we want to make sure we, <laughs> we don't mischaracterize. No, sorry. I, I didn't want to stretch it too far. <laughs> 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 Not running for office. <laughs> so, 
Um, so the goal is to intervene in a very, not intervene in the legal sense, but um, become a member of the conversation, a participant in the conversation once the PUC is here um, on Oahu. And then, of course, I'm hoping that our work will be, will speak for itself and that it really illustrates that there's a need for this kind of community-based discourse um, that, again, provides a bridge between what's happening in the community and what's happening at the policy and stakeholder level. We can be the bridge, yeah. and I think that's really exciting. Two, two thoughts. Though. Yes. Two thoughts. Uh, uh, one is, um, is the nature of the question. Yeah. And Sharon and, uh, and I and the Energy <laughs> Policy Forum, and for that matter, ThinkTech, uh, you know, have been using a program called Meeting Sift. Mm. Um, and Meeting Sift uh, is a website, but it, it's it, it actually designed at the university. Mm. Uh, and it's very good because, it'll, and, and David Ige used it in his campaign mm. from this table, this one. Mm. And, uh, you know, he went out to the public and he asked them questions. And they, they stood by on their cell phones and they answered the questions. Mm. And then it all came in and the program automatically and agnostically interprets, <laughs> interprets those <laughs> answers. And then you get a chart and a graph and a pie chart and, and all this stuff, mm -hmm. graphic re, you know, mm -hmm. uh, representations of what, what people said. And sometimes really surprising. That is interesting. I mean, and we've used this in the last few mm -hmm. uh, Clean, events that we've been energy. putting on, we one or the other that. or both. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's uh, like a survey is what it's like. And it's, it's very rational. But I, I would add this, and uh, of course, SMS, which is what one of the surveyors in town, knows this, and we all should know this, is that the answer in, su in such a large part depends on the question. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, lawyers know that. You know, in, in interrogating a witness, what have you, you can ask a question this way or that way or a series of questions. You can pull them down this road or that road and so forth. And so <clears throat> when you go to the workshops, right. uh, the questions to me now are the most, so the, the sequence would be you go to the workshops, and you try to inform the best you can. This is right. just like Energy Policy mm -hmm. Forum, you know. Mm -hmm. You try to inform the best you can. Mm -hmm. And then you talk to the people, and uh, you say, we hope you understand this. If you have any questions about it, ask the questions. We want you to be fully informed. And when it's all over, we're going to ask you these questions. We're going to get your feedback mm -hmm. on these carefully written multiple choice questions <laughs> <laughs> and then they answer now you, you can't be sure because it's all in the end subjective as to whether they fully understood the question how they interpreted the question you know it's like it's like a jury verdict form right, right? when you <coughs> ask these really important questions then you see what happens but I suspect that you know we're really in the same place kind of trying to get so the only difference is you're going out mm -hmm. you know into the community physically uh, we, we sit around here downtown. It's not <laughs> the same thing. I think you do a lot of great work. So. <laughs> but but uh, you know, it seems to me that this is a good process mm -hmm. to do this. It's not that you know it's going to be the be all end all what right. comes back, but it's it's more evidence about what the people are thinking. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, this is really all about process. As I mentioned, I've been here just about a year, and we're we're last year was all about building the structure. This year is implementation and fundraising. Um, so <laughs> this year is implementation. And we're really trying to figure out the process that works. We may take a different direction. Um, the stakes are high in the North Shore. The stakes are high around the state. But we think we can manage this little slice. Um, and then from it, have a lot of lessons for our team, have a lot of information maybe for the, the state um, to use. Again, we're talking about broad principles. The North Shore is a unique community that we understand and we respect, and our team is, is rapidly getting up to speed on all mm. the issues facing that community. But, but we think there will be some general themes. Um, our approach will be very open-ended, so we're sitting down at a table like this and just talking and, and trying to understand what is going on in that mm. community. Now, we're not only going back to report and say, this is what we heard from you and this is how what you want would fit within the existing policy frame, but we're also saying, okay, we're, we'll be back in the spring, and we will engage in a 14-week in a process with you where we are engaged in what we're calling energy democracy. Mm -hmm. So what are the energy resources in this community? How might the community be able to harness its own resources? What does the community solar bill do for this community? Now, again, I think the jury's still out on how that may play out, um, but here are the levers that you can push on as a community to have more control over how your energy looks and the pricing even uh, of your energy. Okay, we're going to close. Oh. First thing is that Tim gets to use that camera. That one. Which one? Two? Uh, four, number two. 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 I, it's going to go on in a minute. There it is. It's going on.
There it is. Okay. So, <clears throat> and you're it's like Daily be, Show. You're going to be, <laughs> be camera three. You're going to be talking to the people on the North Shore. Mm. You're going to be telling them you're coming out. Okay, and you're, you're kind of ramping up, preparing them for what's going to happen. Uh, tell them the, the mindset they should have when you arrive one day to do the workshop. I would say bring an open mind. Find out what energy justice is all about and tell us what you think of the merger and also how you feel about renewable energy in general on the North Shore. You can join us at Patagonia in Haleiwa on Saturday the 19th uh, from 6 to 8.30. Looking because I'm making sure I'm getting the times right. In Kahuku, 6.30, 6.30 to 8.30. In Kahuku, uh, Saturday, September 26th. That's from 11 until 2. And Sunday, September 27th at Sunset Beach Elementary School Cafeteria uh, from 2 to 5. Two to five. We did not rehearse the show. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. You can tell. Shalon, why don't you close? Now, we're going to make that camera the, what, what its customary use is we call it the DI camera, and that stands for David Ige. Okay. <laughs> tell him about your program and why he should care. Mm. Governor Ige, I know that we are facing a tremendous crossroads in our state, and we have an opportunity to advance a path toward a 100% renewable energy future, that is just. Our program is determining what those pathways might look like and the various options um, that are available. We believe that energy justice comes from the grassroots. I think you believe the same thing. So I look forward to a conversation with you about that process, and I look forward to bringing all of the stakeholders to the table to discuss what energy justice would look like. Thank you, Shalanda. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Talking to you.